to church unlimited wherever you're watching from this is the day the Lord has made for you and I to dwell in his presence I want to invite you to leave those sent to the Lord wherever you're watching from in your office at the hospital in your house this is the day the Lord has made I want you to leave those sent to the Lord and just declare that we cannot bow before you and bow before men we cannot kneel before god and kneel before men hallelujah he's our god he's our protector he's our refuge he's our shield hallelujah he's our helper in time of trouble he's our god come on leave the ourselves to him and open up your mouth wherever you are and glorify the name of jesus hallelujah thank you jesus father we worship you Jesus, we glorify your name. We surrender our heart before you this afternoon. That your name be glorified. Be lifted, O oh God. Be exalted, Jesus. Yes, we adore you and worship you. We call who you are. We acknowledge who you are in our midst, O oh God. Blessed be your name and blessed be your precious name. Hallelujah. We can all bow before you.
is a mighty and strong and tower. You are my God.
that we will live, we will not die because your testimony is alive in our hearts. And Lord, we thank you even this hour that you have given us opportunity to gather virtually and also to speak your word through this media. And Lord Jesus, we pray that all the glory and all the honor be unto you. We pray for our brothers and our sisters who are joining us on the other side. Father, we pray that you're going to speak to them. May this word speak into their hearts and even to the situations that they are going through. And Father, Lord, we pray that by the end of this, all the glory and the praise will be yours forever. In Jesus' mighty name. And on the other side, you can say amen. 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 Thank you, worship team. Uh, the Lord bless you so, so much. Hallelujah. So, good afternoon and uh, praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can only believe by faith that you are there. And uh, it's my joy this afternoon to bring the word of God to you uh, on behalf of our spiritual father, Apostle David Juma. Uh, my name is Mark Mutinda. I'm one of the pastors in the Apostolic House. And uh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we open the word of God, I want to request you, of course, I know you're watching. Uh, I think the next thing you can do is to share as much as you can uh, this service this afternoon. Uh, you can remember also to comment, uh, to like, and, uh, you know, just enjoy yourself. Either you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, uh, the Lord bless you. I believe that this afternoon the Lord will speak to you and God will bless you. So immediately I would like us to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and I want to read uh, verse 12. Deuteronomy is uh, the fifth book of the Bible uh, written by Moses, of course. And I want us to look at this verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 12. 
and we see what the Bible has to say. Apostle David has been talking about walking with God and this being a Friday, I just feel I need to continue with that uh, to see how we can finish this week on the same theme. Now, this is what Moses uh, spoke to the children of Israel. He says, Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, my interest is that verse 12, but, you know, I can just tie it up with verse 13. It says, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Now, in that scripture, we see at least four things that God require of his people. And uh, he required this of his people in the Old Testament. And I believe even in the New Testament is the same thing. God requires these four things. Number one, he says that you fear the Lord your God. Now, the subject of the fear of God is a major subject uh, in the Bible. And there is much we can say there, but you can just put it uh, on the side. And then the second thing he says is to walk in all his ways. So that's the second requirement that God requires of his people, that we walk in all his ways. I believe that is where now we get the whole subject of walking with God. Then the third thing he says, he requires that we love him. And you know, another place he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your might and uh, your mind. So loving God is a requirement. And then fourthly, this is also very important, he says that we serve the Lord our God. We have been called to serve our God. Now, so these are the requirements that God requires of us. And in one of them, we see, he says that he desires and he requires that we walk with him. And we walk uh, in all his ways. So walking with God is, I believe, at the very core definition of the Christian faith. When we came to the faith, we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, the desire of God was not that we go to heaven. That was not the primary desire of God. But I believe it was so that we can walk with him. And I'm going to show you some two scriptures in the book of Genesis in regards to that. Because you see, if, if God's will was for us to go to heaven, then as one preacher said, immediately we got saved. Then we'll, the next thing will happen, we just go to heaven. But here we are on the earth. You know, some of us, we have been saved for quite an, uh, some years now. And, uh, you know, we, we still have a long way to go by the will of God. And so the will of God, as I've said, is that we may walk with him. Particularly at this time when we are in the midst of a great darkness in the earth. There's so much negative things that are going on in the earth. And the hearts of men are failing them. And people are, you know, being offended. There are people I know that I talk to and they feel their faith is being challenged. They are wondering, is God still with us? Am I still walking with God? Because probably of the personal challenges that people are going through. But we are here to encourage you that even in such a time as this, when there is so much darkness in the earth, it is an, it's a time and it's a season for us to walk with God. And I believe that as we walk with God, we are going to see and experience his salvation and we are going to become a great testimony in our generation. And I want to show you two examples of men in the book of Genesis who the Bible clearly uses the word that they walked with God. Um, the first one, of course, is well known. Uh, most of you, you already know where I'm going. In the book of Genesis chapter 
5. And I'm going to read from verse 21 and show you this man and what we can learn with, uh, from him about walking with God. So in chapter 5, it talks about the genealogy of Adam, particularly following the, the, or tracing one of the sons of Adam who was called Seth. And so we see a lineage coming from Seth, which was a godly lineage. And so from verse 1, it gives us how many, uh, you know, the people who were born, how long they lived, the children they got. And then when it comes to chapter 21, it gives a name of somebody, but then it adds, it does not just say, and this man gave birth to so and so, and he lived this many years, then died, but then he, it describes his life. And I believe one of the reasons is because his life was so unique because he was a man who walked with God. And so the Bible says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. Now, after he begot Methuselah, verse 22, Enoch walked with God 300 years. Can you imagine? One man walking with God for 300 years years. He walked with God for 300 years. Can you imagine the seasons that this man went through in his life? You know, he went through so many seasons. Some were good, some were bad, but irrespective of the seasons he found himself in, he maintained his walk with God. And the Bible says he walked with God for 300 years, and then it says, and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And then 24, it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God, he was not, for God took him. I believe that word walking, walking, it talks of consistent or consistency in his obedience. Because you see, sometimes you can obey God, but then if you're not consistent in your obedience to God, then it cannot be said that you're walking with God. So walking with God is characterized, and I think this is important, and some of you, you can just write it down wherever. You know, of course, also uh, on that page. He says, we are saying that, you know, walking with God is consistent obedience. So you cannot say that you are walking with God if your obedience is not consistent. Look at this man. For 300 years, he was walking with God. In other words, it means he was living a life of constant obedience to God. Any instruction that God gave him, he obeyed. He walked with God. And then he says he was not for God took him. In other words, we are saying that as you walk with God, the culmination of our walk with God is that it will be said, we are not. Hallelujah. You walk with God, you come to a place where you cease to exist. You cease to exist. Theologians believe that this man was raptured. You know, he did not die physically, and I believe that is the case. And actually, if you look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it says the same thing, and you know, today we don't have the screens, so I'm just going to use my manual Bible. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. It talks of Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch walked, uh, was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Now listen to this. For before he was taken... He had this testimony. And I pray for my life, as I pray for your life, that before we are gathered with our fathers, before we go to the other side of eternity, it will be said of us as it was said of Enoch. He had this testimony. Look at this testimony. That he pleased God. He pleased God. That was the testimony of Enoch. It doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say he built an empire. He doesn't, he doesn't say he raised children. No, there is only one thing that is in the CV of Enoch. He pleased God. 
and his walking with God is what pleased God. And therefore, you see the culmination of walking with God is transformation. I believe with all of my heart, the calling of the child of God, the calling of any person that God calls, is not to do anything else but to be transformed to the image of Christ. Of course, if Jesus comes in our generation, we shall not see death, but we shall be translated in a twinkling of an eye. That's what the Bible says. But even if he tarries and we live the extent of our lives and then we die and go to the other side of eternity, let me tell you, before we exit the earth, we shall not be there. What does that mean? We shall be so transformed that it is not going to be I, like what Paul says, but Christ who lives in me. And then he says, the life that I live, I live for the glory of God. That demonstrates how someone can walk with God and God can work in their lives and in their hearts. And they are so transformed and they begin to carry the image of Christ on the earth. And I believe that is our destiny and that is our calling. The second example of a man that walked with God is Noah. And so the, the genealogy continues. Now you come to chapter 6 and then it talks of Noah and then now it begins to explain what was happening in the generation of Noah. He says how the sons of men, uh, you, you know, the, the sons of God and the, um, the daughters uh, of men slept together and, and all of that. And then it talks of Noah. In verse 8, I like it because that's the first place you find the word grace mentioned in the Bible. The Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, it would have been enough to just finish there. But then in verse 9, it continues to define the life of Noah. And I believe this verse 9 demonstrates to us or shows us the reason why Noah found grace. There's something that Noah did. There was a certain kind of life that Noah lived that enabled him to find grace with God. Now, in verse 9, the Bible says of Genesis chapter 6, this is the genealogy of Noah. Now, it says this is the genealogy of Noah. What is the genealogy? The pedigree the children who will come after him. So it gives a full stop. So you expect from that full stop, the children of Noah will be mentioned. But before the children are mentioned, because they are mentioned in verse 10, it takes time to explain the character of this man. So he says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations, Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. I pray that it will be said that in your time, your name was mentioned there. So that, yes, we are talking about Noah, but it, let it be mentioned even for you that so and so walked with God. Hallelujah. So Noah walked with God. And then now verse 10 says, And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The story of Noah is a very interesting story because it, there's, there's so much we can see there in the life of Noah and the stories of Noah in those four chapters describing his life. And we don't have time for that, but it's a very interesting study. But then it says Noah was a just man and he was perfect in his generations. In other words, the generations that Noah lived God looked at him and said, in comparison to your generations, you are perfect and you are a just man. You know, and so Noah walked with God. Now that word perfect in his generations, the word perfect can also be uh, interpreted to be integrity. So we can also say he was a just man and he had integrity in his generation. He had integrity. So walking with God is living a life of integrity. You know, ensuring that in your life you are integrated. Every area of your life you are in the will of God. 
I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that it is not the will of God for us to live our Christian life by default. Because I think many of us, we are living our Christian life by default. And the problem with that is that sometimes you may find there are secret sins, there are private sins, there are hidden sins that you may not even be aware of because you are not conscious of your walk with God. But for Noah, he had integrity. He was conscious of his work with God. He considered how he lived. He considered how he lived with his wife. He considered how he raised his children. He considered how he did his business. Every area of his life was not left to chance. It was not just by default, living anyhowly. But he was very measured in the way he lived his life. So this is working with God being perfect in our generation, to be just, to be righteous, and to have purity in our lives. In the book of Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 5, and please allow me to say this, and then I share a few things before we finish. Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. I want us to look at that, and we see how the Bible defines, continues to define the life of, of Noah. I hope you are getting blessed. For those of you who are tuning in, we are still continuing with the subject we began on Monday on walking with God. And you have looked at the life of Enoch and you have seen how Enoch walked with God until he was transformed. We said God requires that we fear him. We walk in his ways. We love him and we serve him. That's Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. So at this time we are tracking the life of Noah. Now in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 this is what the Bible says. Let me begin verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare, listen to this, did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah, one of eight people. Now look at that. A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So here, Noah is mentioned to be a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher, but his message was righteousness, a preacher of righteousness. So if Noah was a preacher of righteousness, you can begin to see the nature of his life. He was a man of righteousness. And so what I'm trying to labor is just to show you that walking with God is primarily walking in righteousness, walking in purity, walking in integrity, walking in in salvation. You know, there are people who have a problem with the God of judgment. You know, we, we want to, to preach and to believe in the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of forgiveness, and all of that is true. But let me tell you something, there is another side of God. He is also the God of judgment. And you know, in the, in the days of Noah, can you imagine, God judged a whole generation. A whole generation God judged. And let me tell you, Yes, we are in the New Testament, but we serve the same God. There are times when God judges people. There are times when God judges nations. There are times when God judges a generation. But at such a time as that, what God is looking for is for men and for women who are walking with him like Noah. And when God finds those men that walk with him, he will preserve them from any impending judgment. I think this is also on a light note. You know, Noah lived for so many years, but can you imagine Noah passed through history and is only known for the one year that he lived. He lived, I think, over 600 years or thereabout, but we only know him because of the one year when he was in the ark. You know, um, I'll quote one preacher, of course, who said last year, uh, you know, this is just an enlightened note, so please don't take offense. Uh, it's good to smile and to be happy. Hallelujah. So, at that time, that one year, Noah was in a lockdown. And it's not him who locked himself. It is not the government that locked him, but God locked him. He was in a lockdown for one whole year. 
And uh, can you imagine if you are Noah, you'll be saying, oh, that one year has been lost. Let me wait for the next year because all this year I've been in the ark. But let me tell you, he may have thought that, but to God, the story was different. That one year, he was, when he was in lockdown, is the watershed of his life. We know him because of that one year. God can take something so bad and can turn it around for good. And I pray and I declare to you in the name of Jesus that even though the world is going through this turmoil, you know, last year we were in lockdown, then the lockdown was lifted, now we are in another lockdown. Let me tell you, yes, things are bad, things are not right. We are praying that things will change, but I believe in a God who is able to take a bad thing and transform it and bring something good out of it. May 2020 and May 2021 produce something sweet for you, something good in your life that even in years to come, you will remember this season and you will have a reason to thank God for what happened for you and the things that God did in your life. Can I get an amen by faith? And I believe someone on the other side is declaring a resounding amen for that. Hallelujah. So now Noah walked with God and what did it produce? What did his walk with God produce? Even if it never produced anything, there is one thing that the walk of Noah produced is that he saved his family. Let me tell you, for those of you who are parents, you may be a father, you may be a mother, your walk with God will save the life of your children. Your walk with God will preserve the next generation. These children that are growing up in our homes, they are watching us, they are looking at us. They are hearing what we are saying, but beyond what we are saying, they are looking at our lives. They want to see men, fathers who are walking with God. They want to see mothers who are walking with God. And your walk with God will save your family. And I pray may that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare our families shall be saved. Our children shall be saved. And Noah preserved the purposes of God in his generation. And even after his generation, in our time, we are enjoying the blessing of Noah. One man who walked with God. And the things that happened in his life. I want to conclude in the next few minutes right now. Just by taking you to the New Testament. This is now the part of the message where we just deal with practical things. Things that you can uh, leave reflecting. And this afternoon you can just reflect on these things. Um, because it's always important when we bring the word of God. We also have a practical um, you know, dimension in what we are sharing. I want to talk about walking with God from the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to mention five things that you can consider as we reflect on this matter of walking with God. This week, it has been our theme, and uh, I believe there is so much to consider. Now, so I'm just going to be very brief uh, and show you uh, this thing. So if you're writing down, you can just write down this five areas of walking with God. Walking with God. Now, and, and you notice I've said they're all from the book of Ephesians. Number one, it is walking in good works. Walking in good works. That is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Secondly, it is walking worthy of your calling. Walking worthy of your calling. That is chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 1. I'm just listing them down and then I take only five minutes to, just to explain very briefly for you to have a grasp of these matters. So walking worthy of your calling. Thirdly, it also shows us that we need to walk in love. That is Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. Walking in love. And then number 4, we are also admonished to walk in light. That is chapter 5 verse 8. Walking in light. And then finally, uh, a very technical word. It says walk circumspectly. 
That is in chapter 5, verse 15. Walk in good works. Walk worthy of the calling. Walk in, your, in love. Walk in light. Walk circumspectly. So very briefly, and then we pray. What does that imply? What does that mean? When you talk about walking in good works, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it describes what these good works are. He says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now the first thing you need to believe is that you have been created in Christ. That's the meaning of the new creation. You have been created in Christ. You have been formed in Christ. Therefore you need to find yourself in Christ. We have been we are his workmanship created in Christ. God has crafted you in a unique way. God has designed you in a unique way. God has formed you. God has created you in Christ in a unique way. And then he says, for good works. Then he continues to say, these good works were prepared before we arrived on the scene. They were prepared before we came, beforehand, that we should walk in them. So what God does, he creates two things. Oh God, ah, Makaya Bazeke. Two things God created. Number one, he created good works. That's the first thing he created. Before he created us, he created good works for us. Then, when he created those good works, he now came and then created us in Christ. So, we have been created or tailor-made for certain good works. So, if a man and a woman is to walk with God, they must first of all know that they have been created in Christ, but also they need to know what are the good works that I'm created for. And when you identify those good works you are created for, then let me tell you, that is walking with God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been created for certain good works. So the good works is not just moral things, that good moral things that we do. No, but it are the things that we were ordained for. They are things that we, are, we were destined for. They are things that we were created for. We are here not to fill a vacuum. We are here to fulfill divine purpose and divine ordination. And that is a good work. And show me a man who has found himself in Christ and who has identified those good works created for them. I will show you a man who is walking with God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Then secondly, as, as we are trying to finish, because see we have five minutes, is walking worthy of the calling in chapter 4. And then it describes the calling. It says, I therefore... Chapter 4, verse 1, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called with all lowliness. Now look at, now walking worthy of the calling. It is in humility. It is in gentleness. It is in long suffering. It is in bearing with one another in love. It is by endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is how we need to walk. We walk in humility, we walk in gentleness, we walk in patience, we walk in love, we walk bearing with other people's weaknesses, we walk in peace. All of these are part of what we call integrity. And when you walk in these dimensions, let me tell you, you're walking worthy of your calling. In other words, you're walking with God. And then in chapter 5 verse 2, we begin in verse 1, it says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to go God for a sweet smelling aroma. Walking in love, what does that mean? Loving God and loving your fellow men. I tell you in this season when people are going through a very difficult time, this is a time to show the love of Christ. You know, you know, some, somebody can say, you know, Pastor, me, I have nothing to give. 
let me tell you, you can just give a call to somebody. Just know how someone is doing. You know, reach out to people. Extend the love of Christ. And when you're walking in love, I tell you the truth, you're walking with Christ. I pray that none of us will stand in the day of judgment and will come before God with our credentials and say, you know, I was a prophet. I was an apostle. I was a great man uh, who served you in, in the earth. And then Jesus will look at us and say, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because we were not men and women of love. Let me tell you, if we are to please God, we must walk in love. We must love God with every fiber of our being. And we must extend that love to men. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that God has already poured his love in our hearts. So it is time now to release that love from your heart to touch your fellow men. And God is going to bless you. That is what we mean by walking with God. Hallelujah. Walking in love. And then the same chapter, chapter 5, verse 8, he says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Then verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. And this is in brackets. Is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The fruit of the Spirit is walking in light. So when we, when we talk about walking in light, and Apostle David labored for some few days to talk about the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5. And we, here we see now that when you're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruit of the Spirit, you are walking in light. You know, love, patience, peace, joy, you know, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, faithfulness, all those things. It is walking in light in light. When the fruit of the Spirit is in your life, your life is full of light. Hallelujah. Your life is full of light. And then I want to finish now the last thing, walking circumspectly in chapter 5, verse 15. I believe you are getting blessed. You know, we are just talking about how to walk with God from the book of Ephesians. Walking in good works. Walking worthy of the calling. Walking in love. Walking in light. And then finally, walking circumspectly. Verse 15 of chapter 5, Ephesians, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, listen keenly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Walking circumspectly, in brief, it is walking in the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Walking in the wisdom of God. And James, speaking about wisdom in James chapter 1, he says, if there is anyone who lacks wisdom, what should he do? Let him go to God. Let him go to God. Let him ask. And then let him ask in faith, not wavering or not being double-minded. And when you ask in faith, God will give you wisdom. And so the wisdom of God is walking with God. And so if we are to walk with God, we need to begin to access wisdom. And even in this season of the lockdowns and coronavirus and all of that, I pray that God will raise sons of the kingdom who will walk in the wisdom of God, who will tap into the wisdom of God. And God will indeed bless us. And so these are the few meditations for this afternoon. And I believe that you have taken hold of something in those few uh, minutes that we have shared and I know that God will indeed bless you. Let's take this weekend to reflect on how we can walk with God even in this season. And therefore, I want us to make a prayer and what I want to ask you on behalf of the leadership of the Apostolic House as we have always been doing, we want to come to you and to ask you to give an offering. If you are here physically, you would have given an offering very, very liberally, very freely, because you will know you are in the service. Now, let me tell you, you are not here physically, but you are in this service. We are in the service virtually. And so even though there is distance, there are means in, in participating together in the ministry of giving and receiving by M-Pesa. And therefore, I want to ask you to consider to give. Give 
as we finish. And also, as we give right now in this service, you know, I want to ask you if you have been blessed by the online ministry, you know, Church Unlimited, you have been blessed by this online ministry, consider giving sacrificially at any time and God will bless you. You are giving goes a long way to help us to do what we are doing in this house. So how can you give? Just go to your Mpesa, go to buy goods and services. Uh, that's still number. And then use the number that appears on your screen. 572672. And when you give, you'll see the name Life Church International and you will know that that offering has come to the house. If you're there and you also want to pay your tithe, you're a member of this house, please, you can use the same um, you know, system to give your tithe. And I know God will bless you. You know, I almost, ask, I almost asked you, let's stand and pray. And then I realized there is nobody here. But uh, wherever you are, you may be seated, but in your heart, stand up. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so that we can pray and release you, commend you to God for this weekend. And I know God will bless you. Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us an opportunity. We don't take it for granted that even in the midst of this lockdown, we are able to reach out and to minister to people who are going through difficult times. Some of them don't know what to do. But Father, we thank you that we are able to reach out to them by your word. And we pray that this word will be like a two-edged sword. It shall pierce and convict men and women. And the Lord, we are going to see great harvest that will come into the kingdom. Even those who have not given their lives to Christ. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will convict them. And the Lord, they will turn their hearts to you. And their lives will be transformed. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church says, Amen. So God bless you. We want to release you with a song. And uh, even as you are giving your offering, and uh, God bless you. We'll meet again next week for our morning glories and also our lunch, our services. Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom. We love you. Amen. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself.